ladies, I decided to go live directly into the group rather than through StreamYard today. I got some stuff I want to, I don't know, revisit, reflect on because it is, after all, Throwback Thursday, right? But to me, Throwback Thursday, it can be a round of fun stuff, of course, you know, looking back at how we used to dress in the 80s, the music we listened to, or the 70s, or the, the 90s, depending on like when you grew up, when you were born, when, and what your memory is around that. But I, I want to bring it back to, you know, what I do. And who I am is I'm a, I, I'm a coach, of course, we all know that. But I'm a mindset and emotional awareness coach. And really what I, I love, what I truly love to do is that I am someone who is a mission-driven woman, right? I'm a mission-driven coach. And my mission in this respect, so I'm not sure what is going on with my computer, but my mission uh, to help women is to, to help women to really dial into not only about emotional awareness and triggers and mindset and all of that, but it's to help them to build and design a life that they love living so that it's like where they are intentional around their time, where they become super uh, self-aware and start noticing their thoughts that are based on how their feelings, based on how they're thinking, which is gonna like tur in turn drive their actions and, and their reward system, right? And so that's what I do and what I love to do. And yesterday I talked about five strategies. I, I talked about five self-care strategies to, let me just go, to, for your overall emotional well-being. They were connection, health, uh, the DIY as a strategy, quitting that, uh, your VIP list, and anchor celebration moments. And today I want to lean into the DIY as a strategy. That's something I want to reflect back on because I used to be that girl. So I want to give you a little bit of background on that. So my whole life, pretty much my whole entire uh, working career, I've been working in law. I've been working as a, an, a legal assistant and then transitioned into being a paralegal in the field of law. And more particularly, I was working in the corporate side of things. So I wasn't really, I wasn't a litigation assistant or paralegal. I didn't get into the specific others where there was more of a, a more of a what I could say a really niched down like what I do niche down, but that was their specific skill set. But rather in the corporate world meant I could really kind of put put my finger on where in different areas of corporate and what that looks like. And it's a broader topic than it is with these narrower niches. So yes, there are niches within companies, and so. Over my tenure as, as a legal assistant paralegal, I became really super skilled at what I do. Um, and I started adopting a mindset as a do it myself as, as the only strategy because I, only I could really get, get shit done the right way or I should say my way. And I felt it was really hard for me and I started realizing that this mindset I was le leaning into was, I truly believe that it would take way too much of, of my valuable time to have to sit someone down to explain to them how to do something so that I could give that task to them, rather than just doing it myself, which, which I felt was gonna be quicker because I already knew what I needed to do and how to do it. But instead, I didn't get rid of that task, right? So I had a multitude of things to do, and instead of taking that five to 10, maybe 15 minutes of my time to explain something to someone that they could do that might take them maybe half hour, an hour to do once they got the logistics of it, um, and that would have taken that off my plate, it would have freed me up to do more other things that needed to get done that were important, but instead I adopted that do it myself or the do it yourself as the only strategy for getting anything done, meaning I thought I had to do it all. I thought I was the only one that could do it. I adopted that. And I wouldn't ask for help. Or if someone offered it, I, again, as I was saying, felt like it would be too much time, to take up too much time, be too time consuming to, um, to really like explain something that would take really time time away from me doing a, doing something, but also on the flip side would really actually benefit me if I could give that to someone else. So if you can feel me, uh, I'd love it if you're watching this live or if you're watching it back 
to like comment and just let me know if you get that, if you've actually felt that, because I know it's real. It's nothing to be sh ashamed of, but that do it yourself as the only strategy that you adopt in your life can actually do more harm to you, especially if you're, if you are entrepreneurial mindset, mind, and you have that desire to start something new, or you're in the middle of actually creating and building something for yourself, that if you are adopting the the mindset that oh no only I can do it and I don't have time to explain what that end again uh, is that bringing you down that road to actually um, you know self sabotaging yourself in what you're trying to do and so I wanted to lean into that more today because well yesterday I also left you with the fact that I I gave you some tips around self care. But information is just information, right? Until you implement it, and that's when it becomes action, right? And when you take action, that's when something can enhance your overall well-being. And I also said that if you watched it, that some of you are going to take the information and you're going to actually put it into action. And some of you aren't going to do that, and some of you wouldn't do that. And that could all come down to a mindset of, I don't have enough time, like I was just talking about. Oh, I don't have enough time. I have a family. I have kids. I have a significant other. I have my business or the job that I have to go to. I don't have enough time in the day. I can't, don't even have time for myself. But really, that's just not managing your time where instead your time is managing you. Because we all equally, and everyone in the world, including the most successful of entrepreneurs in the world, they all have the same 24 hours as we do. So what's their secret? There's really no secret. They don't have a magic pill secret that none of us can tap into. The secret is they just realized that they need to become super specific and really intentional around managing their time. And they found a way to do that. And they went through specific processes of figuring out, well, what, am, what are the things that I'm doing that I could actually give to someone else? Remember, instead of doing it all themselves, they realized they had to hire a team. What can you do to help me? What can I what can I offload to someone else who's going to be equally capable of doing it? Doesn't mean I can't, but this will free me up, right? So again, we all have the same 24 hours, but it's how we manage that time. And the, those of us who decide that we need to do it all ourselves, that's when we're the people, the ones who are complaining, saying we don't have enough time, because that's where we feel we're at a loss, because we're trying to do everything ourselves, because we feel, we think, we have to do everything ourselves. So like I was trying to tell you this because this was a mindset I had adopted for almost my entire tenure of working in that industry, feeling like I couldn't offload information. There were times, I had two, a couple of times during that process that I had my own assistant in, within that work dynamic and that wasn't because I asked for one or I chose and I wanted one, it was because it was given to me as part of my position in the, in the firm. And we worked well together, the two assistants that I had worked with. However, going forward into my life, I still, once I got past that and had no more assistance, and I still had to learn how do I do this? And I realized the only way to do it was to do it myself. Because I didn't, I felt like I just didn't have enough time. And time, and really time, as I had said yesterday, time really is, if you want more time for yourself to, to get more done, to have, and so that you have that time for your, for you to do, to have time for yourself, to have time for your family and friends, you know, to get more done in your life, all areas of your life, it, you have to do the inner work because that's where it creates the time. So that's learning to manage the emotions, which might like trip you up because yes, you're in the middle of a day where all of a sudden something happens, like it hits the fan, right? And all of a sudden you go from zero to 100 and you start feeling things and you're, and you're not feeling good. You have to start looking back, track it back to what, th what you're thinking. But if you don't do that, you're, you're caught up in the emotion and your emotion is managing you and you don't get anything done. And so you find yourself losing time. Yes, because you are caught up in that loop, right? So why am I talking about this? Well, as I said, yesterday I gave you some, some tips on self-care. And I truly believe that self-care is so important. It's actually the foundational piece to my newest program where it's a six-month six container. And it's really about building 
those building blocks that are really going to, you know, support you and keep you um, grounded and focused and intentional and using your time well so that you and having those those connections where when you are all in for your family and your friends and you're not feeling resentful thinking you have to work and it's having that time freedom where you can actually go all in for your work and you don't feel guilty that you're not spending time with the people that you that you care about most and or not having time for yourself you know and there's all of these foundational pieces and it does begin with mindset because mindset is key to everything you talk to anybody out in the industry they are always going to lead back to mindset because what you believe is what's going to influence how you think and feel and usually when you're feeling something when you go back to what your thoughts your thoughts are going to dictate how you how you show up in your world and the things that you say and you do right because what you're thinking is based off how you're feeling when you can track it back to that you realize that, that how you're showing up in the world is usually from a place where you're not feeling good about something and your actions are going to mimic or mirror what you're feeling and thinking and that is going to then take you down a road where you're going to lose time because you're not you're going to allow your emotions and the things that you're thinking to manage your day so one of the things I watched today was pretty awesome. What I do every day is I, well, of course, I do mindset work, but I also am incorporating um, making sure that I, I, I have some kind of inspirational or motivational or um, educational um, information that I take in to learn. Always, I, I adopt a, a growth mindset because I truly believe that you know I can continuously learn. Um, but I'm also implementing it, right? Because again, remember I said information is just information and knowledge is just knowledge and, and it doesn't become powerful until you implement it and take, and take action, right? So that it can enhance and change your life. But I, I do this on a daily basis and the reason why I'm doing this is because it actually helps me to really hone my skills, right? To really lean into more about like what am I, what I'm talking about I'm, I've been getting a lot of validation. When I first started as a coach, a lot of the things that I was, uh, I was speaking on was from a lot of personal experience and, and things that I had actually found through working with people was the case. And as I grew and as I, and as, and as I became certifi certified in different areas of coaching, I came to find other people in the industry who are actually very successful were, were mirroring the things that I was saying. They were saying the same exact thing and I had never heard from them before. I'd never heard any of their content or read any of their content before. And then so when I was reading this, reading things and hearing things, I was actually being validated by my own skill sets that I had developed over my lifetime through my experiences and I was being validated. Not that I was needing to be validated, but it was just nice to actually see that the industry was actually leaning in that direction and that science was actually talking about it too. So here's the thing. I watched a Steve Gargulo TED Talk. Uh, I don't know how long ago he did it, but as I said, I went looking this morning for what can I look at because I was asking specific questions. That's part of the process, right? I talk about for myself, um, you know, what can I, how can I have like this, well, how can I intentionally show up in my day? And it's through asking pow empowering questions, but it's also asking powerful questions on how I can serve in the industry that I'm serving in, right? And so then I took that a step further and looked for specifics around the questions that I was asking today. And one of them was, it brought me to this Steve Gargulo TED Talk, and he talks about action and how, as I was saying, remember, information is just information unless you take action. Uh, knowledge is just knowledge and it's not powerful unless you take action. It can't enhance your life unless you do something with it, what you've learned. But what happens is a lot of the time, there's that percentage, right? Like I put a question in there, are you, one, are you in the 1% or are you in the 99%? Meaning, are you in the 1% that does, that will actually show up and take action and do the things and maybe, it not, might not always turn out the way you expected, but you actually go in for yourself. You actually take inspired action to see, okay, where can this go? Or are you in that 99% that keeps yourself out of it? Now, there's a whole other formula that I, I also go into in my programs that I work with people but, uh, and other trainings that I've done, but it really comes down to emotional intelligence in that too, right? That the learned helplessness uh, as well will actually stop people from taking action, meaning 
people sometimes will not take action based on things that they've learned through when they have taken action and the hard lessons. You know, you hear people saying, I, I learned something the hard way. And so they'll look at that as the, the driving force behind them doing anything. And so that will actually keep them from taking action because they're like, well, I did that big down this road before. That was, I know what uh, type of outcome happened to me before. It wasn't so pleasant. I really don't want to, I don't want to experience that again. So rather than looking at it from, you know what, I've been through that before, but actually can go through this. How am now I'm in a different place in my life? I've grown as a person. Uh, I'm optimistic. Let me take, let me take a look at this again. Let me see if taking this avenue, doing this inspired action, you know, taking inspired action around this particular thing might actually help me. Again, in the do it yourself, or you actually ask for help or accept help when it's offered. You know, like I was that person, as I said, I wanted to do it myself because I felt I didn't have enough time to actually even 15 minutes to explain to someone that would take an hour, an hour task off of my plate. I mean, can you believe that? So even if it was an hour task, 15 minutes of my time to explain to someone how to do it, knowing that if they took, if, uh, if I felt confident that they understood and gave it to them to do, then wouldn't that be beneficial to me, right? So it's learning how to, uh, can you relate? Because I, I, I just want to know if you're hearing me on this, because sometimes we can hear something and we're, we're not really thinking about, oh, yeah, actually, I can relate to that. So I want you to think about, you know, you know experiences in your life. You know, something in your life that maybe you are that do-it-yourself person and maybe there are instances in your life where you've had something you're thinking, oh, I really wish I could pass this off to someone. And maybe there is someone in your life that's saying, hey, I noticed that you are, you know, doing X, Y, Z uh, or A, B, C. Can I help you with, with A? You know, or can I help you with part of that? You know, and so not being, you know, being okay to be actually at, open to um, help if someone offers it and open to asking. There's no shame in asking. Uh, it doesn't mean that you're not capable. It just means that you want, you value your time and you value that if I can give someone this information because I know exactly what needs to do, be done and they get it, then that saves me valuable time that I can do other things. So I just want you to think about that. So Steve, getting back to Steve Gargulo, his, um, his TED Talk. So I will post that in the link as well after I'm finished. So, his talk is <laughs> called The Science of Taking Action. And <clears throat> his first, he had, he had three points and he ended with a, a fourth, which I kind of decided would become number four. But he said, action is a muscle, right? The more you practice, it becomes a muscle memory and you don't have to think about it. Again, that's so true. So the more you start doing things and the, get yourself in the doing of taking action on something instead of waiting and deciding maybe later, and we're gonna get to that next, um, the more you do something, the more you actually put yourself out there, the more it becomes practice, becomes, becomes a muscle memory that you're not, oh, I gotta do, like I am in the doing. For example, my morning routine, I do without fail, 365 days a year. So there's not a day that, or 366 if it's a leap year. I actually do something every single day. Every morning when I wake up, I am doing my meditation, I am doing my journaling, I'm actually doing gratitude reflection so I can anchor in those moments, those celebration memories of being grateful for everything, gratitude stacking, right? I also have my perfect 10 life that I am, I, I visualize and what that would look like and how it would feel and what I'm doing and where I am and who I'm with and all of that. And I do these things every single day and this helps me to get one step closer, right? I'm doing the action. It became so it became such a normal thing for me to do. It's a muscle memory, right? I'm taking action every morning doing this. I don't even have to think about it because I know it's exactly what I'm gonna do every morning. But number two usually shows up for a lot of people, right? They want to, and he calls it, we want to set aside time later, meaning I want to do, I, I, I want to do this, but I'm gonna do this later. I'll find, I'll find, find some space later in the day to do this. But what ends up happening? that later in the day, life shows up, right? Life shows up and then what happens is, oh, well, later came and I can't actually do that. And so you're saying, well, I'll, I'll get to that a little bit later. So then you're like, okay, I'll get to that a little bit later, but then a little bit later comes and again, you, you have other things that take 
your mind off of it or you forget about it or you think oh I'm gonna do it tomorrow but what, what usually happens when people start putting off things you know when you hear the saying don't put off to tomorrow what you can get done today right well I kind of agree with that and I don't I believe that we get done in a day what we're capable of doing in a day and if we don't get it all done there's always tomorrow to do the things that we didn't finish um, and being okay with that and not shaming ourselves for that but again what happens is that a week will pass a month will pass months you know a whole year will pass and you might even not even actually take any action on any of the ideas that you've had or any of the things that you've learned and so you find yourself still stuck a year from now so if I'm talking to you a year from now you know reflecting on the year and what you've accomplished and you're going to look back and go well there were some things I wanted to do but I never didn't do them and then you start looking through that and you're going ooh why didn't I do that but then you start taking yourself down shame lane and I don't want you to do that either I want you to be able to start taking action and you know committing to taking action right away like not just saying okay I want to do oops I want to do something but actually saying you know what this is going to fit in my schedule right now or if it's not right now first thing in the morning I'm going to start doing this so if that means meditation and then like five minutes meditation of gratitude meditation where your gratitude stacking right and then journaling about it and that could be the start to you taking action and if you continue that for at least 30 days what have you done you started creating this habit if you continue on for another 60 days after that it can become a lifestyle you are then you are increasing that you'll have muscle memory around taking action that way right so the number three was when we have ideas for example things that we want to do with our life goal setting right when we have an idea it's really easy in fact it's easier to generate actions for other people's ideas you know it's harder for us to say oh I have an idea what do I want to do and I have a process for that but usually it's harder for us to come up with actions for our own ideas for whatever reason is it could be because there's that self-doubt there's that worthiness talk that we have in our head which by the way you're worthy regardless um, so worthy really is just a word and it's just it's an added stacked on meaning that humans have done that we've created there's like there's this other piece to the word mean uh, me word meaning to the word worthy and we've stacked that on and that's how we have a value system for ourselves and we have this percentage that we put ourselves in like I'm only this worthy right or I'm not worthy at all and we're the ones that have put that addition additional value we put value on the word worthy when we already are worthy so I want you to put that in your head but the thing is it is easier to generate um, to give people ideas for what they've said so you know when someone comes to you and they say oh you know this is what I really want to do and you go oh you could do this or you could do that and oh have you tried this and oh have you tried that and you should reach out to so-and-so and you start brainstorming with them about their idea but when it comes to your idea, you're like stuck. And that's because you're getting stuck in your head about, oh, the worthiness conversation, right? Am I worthy? And then the deserving piece comes in. Worthy and deserving of even doing this? Would I even be good? Will I fail? Oh my gosh, who am I? I don't even know what to do. I don't even know where to start. So like I said, I have a whole process about that. And it's about like turning, you know, the questions. Questions are powerful. It's how we frame our questions which will help lead us to the next level. So well, that's something I cover in my program. Uh, and the last thing he said, which was, I added it as number four. He said there's only three, but I added it as number four. And I think this is genius because it's true. Everything in life that is hard is just a series of things that are easy, meaning you just have to take the first step and it's just like one step after another and it becomes easier and easier as you become more comfortable in taking action and you like you have um, strengthened your action muscle right you start doing those things that become second second nature they become habit right and again that's like a, a, you could be that person that just that used to like right now you could be that person that says you know what I always was that do-it-yourself girl but now I think that if I need help I'm gonna actually reach out or I was a do-it-yourself girl and there's someone in my life right now who's actually offered to help me and I've kind of put it off thinking that only I can do it but maybe I'm going to revisit that and see if maybe they can and see what their thoughts are you know brainstorm the thoughts with them 
Um, and, then, and, and being able to be okay that if you have tasks that you set for day, action steps that you want to take, but you don't get it all done in one day, that that's okay, that you're in action is like stellar, it's amazing. And if you can't get it all done in a day, that's okay. Time is, time is like everyone has the same amount of time. Time is not the most important thing. It's actually how you use your time. And timing really does matter. Meaning sometimes, for example, myself, I'm in a whole new place than I was a year ago. Mindset wise, emotional awareness wise, skill set wise, motivation, um, where I'm taking my business wise, all of those things are different. I'm more intentional, more focused, more aligned, and I want to expand. And I think a lot of that has to do with just being, taking action every day, being in the action, you know, building on that muscle, allowing myself to anchor in my celebration moments, learning to start gratitude stacking, starting to ask the more powerful questions that lead me down a more positive solution oriented road rather than looking at obstacles and the problems and what's holding me up, right? So I'm trying very hard, not, and I'm just using the word hard, but I'm being intentional about being in that 1% of women who want, really wanna show up, and so I'll do that for myself. Like I'm showing up for me, right? And I'm showing up for me and showing up for you as I go live in the group. So I hope that I hope that this is helpful for you to hear because I know it can be really super hard to admit that you're the 99, right? That you're not taking action or you're the one who puts off your action and then never takes action. That you put, you set goals that you never achieve because you don't take action because you keep putting it off until tomorrow and tomorrow's become weeks and months and years, right? And so that's okay. There's no shame, but I truly want you to start thinking about like how can I start to take action now that's really inspiring for me how do i do that like i said i have a program around it um it's it's intended to bring you through an entire process it's a six month container it's it's very intensive in the first four months around mindset and emotional awareness all about you setting yourself up for success and then getting into the pieces of strategy like meaning the, 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 the first part is around the foundational part of it. The second, the, the, the second part around that is really around the strategies of the things that you do, like how, what you do and how you do it and, and what you're like focusing on. And then the third, uh, the third piece is around like commitment, focus. That's the plan, like endurance, committing to something really, right? So if you're interested in knowing about that, then you can just DM me and we can set up a conversation and uh, get on a quick call. I like to call them connection calls just to see like where you're at and what you what you're what you're thinking. And you know, because I think when you start doing these calls, it, it allows you to say out loud what's up here, right? Um, you know, because sometimes we think that oh we're in our head, you know, and we and we think, oh, I, I don't know if that if, if that's a dumb question. And it's like no question is a stupid question in my eyes in my opinion, because if you're thinking it, it's bothering you. You need to get off your chest. So DM me if you'd like to have a, excuse me, if you'd like to have a call and we can, um, we can see where you're at, definitely. You just never know. It might be that this is what you need, right? Just to have that connection conversation. It might be that this is where I'm going to just pop the link in now. So I'm just popping in the link, the science of take, taking action. Um, let me just quickly do this again because I don't like how that went. And okay, so I'm popping that in now. Check it out. It's a real. It's a short video, um, but it's 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 powerful enough in the words. He starts to give you the idea of how to actually brainstorm yourself into actually taking action to actually you know if you have an idea well how do you do that well it's easy it really is super easy anyhow i digress 
I hope you guys are having a great day. Remember to navigate your day with an attitude of gratitude because with the right attitude, it will give you the right mindset for when life throws your curveballs or puts up those roadblocks. You'll be in a better place to manage your emotional trigger moments. I'm excited uh, to hear from you what you thought about this. Uh, definitely drop me a DM if you want to set up a call and we can do that. And also comment below. Are you the do it yourself? Are you, are you willing, are you ready to ask for help from other people or someone's offering you help or are you one that, uh, are you ready to ask for help, right? And uh, definitely, I, I would love to hear what you have to say about the videos. I think it's very cool. All right, guys, I hope that you have a great rest of your day and I will see you guys tomorrow night at, uh, so tomorrow afternoon for those on the West Coast, 3 p.m. Pacific. And for those of you on the East Coast, 6 p.m., and I'm going to do the mindset training. We're going to go a little bit deeper, okay? So, hope, have a great day, and I'll see you again soon. Bye, guys.